So we've been talking about acceleration, and we've said that the acceleration is equal to the time rate of change of velocity. But that also means that the velocity, the change in velocity from start to finish, is the integral, the undoing of the derivative of acceleration times this time from initial to final. And remember, if you're new to calculus, the d just means a little bit. Okay, so if and only if the acceleration is constant with respect to time, you can pull the acceleration out of the integral. And then we just have an integration over a little bit of time from start to finish, which is just all of the time when you sum it from start to finish. Okay, so we could write this that the V final minus V initial is equal to the acceleration times the final time minus the initial time. What we tend to do in this discipline of kinematics is we let anything that has an initial value, we write it as something with a zero, and this is pronounced not, which is an old-fashioned word that's really probably only used in this context anymore. So, for example, we would call the initial um, speed v naught, And then usually what we do is we let the final value just um, be by itself then without any uh, particular subscript. So then this becomes v minus v naught is a times time. And the other weird thing that we do is we also let t initial be equal to zero. So we're left just with this. So this actually should make some sense to you now because what this is is essentially the equation of a line. So this says that v is equal to v naught plus a times t. This is a line. In other words, if we were to graph that, it looks something like this. So as a function of time, the velocity maybe looks like a line. Well, we said that the slope of this line, the slope of this line is the acceleration. And indeed, that's a constant slope line. So we're feeling pretty good about this. So some initial value v naught at time equals zero and then some final value, or really any value at any time t, can be written in this way. Notice, by the way, that we can also write as a function of time the acceleration, right? Well, what's going on here is that at each of these points, if we were to evaluate the slope at each of these points, we get the same number all the way along at each of those points. And indeed, this is a constant acceleration. So I really can't emphasize enough that what we're doing here is for constant acceleration. Acceleration doesn't have to be constant, but we're going to talk about a lot of important cases where it is. I also want to mention, for those of you that are new to calculus, that if this part of the, um, of the equation here looked funny to you, um, all this really is is a sum. This is a sum. And it's a sum of um, the acceleration value times, it's not actually that part, sorry, it's actually this part. This part, more generally, is a sum. And it's a sum of the acceleration times some time interval. So if you meant, remember that the d just means a little bit, you can imagine that a little bit maybe looks like this. Now, I've made it bigger. And so by summing over all of these things, we're basically going to take all these little rectangles in here and we're going to sum. So what this says is that the change, the change in the velocity is the sum of these little bits of area. So it is equal to the area under the curve, where we said before that the slope of the curve is equal to acceleration. And these two ideas go together. But the final result here is that we have this equation. And this equation is important. This equation is sometimes called the first kinematic equation. 
And if you remember anything about constant acceleration, it should be this equation right here. We're going to use this a lot. 